So imagine you've built a powerful B2B AI application. It uses the latest LMs, but when you try to sell it to an enterprise, they ask, do you support SAML SSO? Can we manage roles? If the answer is no, the deal is dead. So today we're going to quickly make an AI app enterprise ready using Dscope. Thanks to Dscope for partnering with me on this video. So I have this website, it's basically a demo website. And when I go to the dashboard, it goes right into the dashboard with all your chat here, your AI chat and the documents in here. That's bad because we want this to be access controlled. We want to make sure someone has to sign in to access this dashboard. So I'm over on Dscope. And once you create your account, you get logged in, it will bring you to this getting started where you can get this set up uh, pretty easily. So we're going to be using SSO, but there's different ways, different authentication methods you can use. And then what do you want to use for uh, multi-factor authentication? We'll just go ahead without it for now for this example. And then we can choose what, what login screen we want. I'm going to go with this one right here. And then when we get to this page, we can see it in action. So we go to next here. And now it's going to show the different screens. We have the sign in, sign up screen, and the sign up or in screen. And we can also get the code here. So we're on Next.js, and we can also see the project ID, which we are going to need for our application. So to get this to work, we are going to have to install the SDK, the Dscope Next.js SDK and we're in my code. So I will go into the app slash layout here and we'll just update it to use Dscope. First of all, we are going to import auth provider from the Next.js SDK and then we're just going to wrap what's returned, this return with auth provider. And I'm going to put the project ID and you can see this code is actually the same as we see right here. And now let's create a login page. So I'm just going to create a new file here, which is going to be app slash login slash page dot TSX. And we don't need to code any input fields. We're just putting this dscope component here that's going to give us everything we need, the sign up or in flow ID. And finally, to force users to log in, we'll create a middleware file. So I'll just create middleware.ts and then we'll add this with our project ID and our redirect route. Now let's just get some more stuff set up on the Dscope console. So I'm gonna go to authorization in the sidebar here. We see a tenant admin role already exists by default. That's great, it saves us some time. We're gonna need that. But right now it only has generic permissions like use admin. We need to teach it about our AI. So I'm gonna click the permissions here. I'm gonna call this AI configure. And this represents the ability to change the system prompts. Now I'm gonna to go to the tenant admin role and then go to edit. And then I'm going to just add AI configure to the permissions. And then we'll just save that. And then now you can see it appears right here. Now I'm going to create a new role, the viewer role. Name AI viewer. Can chat but cannot configure. We'll leave the permissions empty. They can see but they cannot touch. So I'll just click add. Now we'll assign role to a user. So I'm going to go to the user sidebar here. I'm going to create a new user. We can use emails or phone numbers here. So I'm just going to put an email address and then for authorization, I'm going to add a role and I'm going to add the tenant admin role and we will turn off send invitations for right now. And then I can just click create. Now let's enforce our back in code. So let's go to the dashboard slash page file. And so this is the file that creates the dashboard. And we're going to check if the user has the tenant admin role. So what I'm going to do is import the use session and use user from Dscope. And then before the return here, we are going to get some variables like is authenticated, is session loading, the user is session loading, when we're going to show a loading screen, and then is admin. We check if the user has the tenant admin role we saw in the console. 
Then we're gonna upgrade this navigation. This CSS, this button should only be visible to admins. And now we have this conditional, is admin, then we can configure agent, else it'll just say viewer mode. Okay, let's test it out. So I'm on the home page and go to dashboard, and now it's making me sign in. So I'll do continue with Google, and it allows, allows me to log in. And it says configure agent here because I'm on the, I have the admin role. If I go back over to the users, and if I edit the user, and so and if I take away the admin role, and I give it the AI viewer role, now if I refresh, it says I'm in viewer mode. So it's giving me a different mode depending on which role I have. I'll just go back to admin role. Okay, now let's talk about multi-tenant SSO. We're gonna see how you would onboard a big enterprise customer. So I'm gonna go back to the Dscope console and go to tenants. So I'm just gonna click add tenant and I will call it Acme Corp and then create. So instead of configuring their SAML settings manually, we give them the keys. So normally you'd have to manually configure SAML settings, but Dscope provides a setup suite link. You can get directly to the Acme Corp's IT team. So we're gonna go into this tenant and we go down here and then I'll click generate link. Okay, so when we, we're gonna copy this link and then we'll visit it over here. Okay, so then they will see this setup wizard that can be used to connect Okta or Azure AD without us writing a single line of code. So in the SSO suite, you're presented with several options, the SSO configuration and skim configuration. We're gonna focus on SSO configuration. So I'll click here and it comes with many default configured providers. Um, each will guide you through each step of the setup. So if I click here and then SAML, so we can see it's gonna be a step-by-step -step instructions in addition, the URLs you're gonna need are presented to you. And the SSO suite will guide you on which inputs you need to enter and give the fields where you can enter them. So to keep things simple for this video, I'm gonna set up a connection with Mock SAML, which is a website that allows you to set up a pretend SAML endpoint as the IDP. So I'm gonna pick the general SAML connection and then I'll go over to this mocksaml.com. And then all we need to hear is the metadata URL for mocksaml. So I'll just copy this URL. First I have to continue here, and then I'll paste in the URL here. We can either put in the URL or we can enter everything manually. So I'll just continue here. From here we get user mapping, SSO domains, and we can actually click save and test to save and test our configuration and then we just use a sample email address and domain, and I can click sign in. And here's a message we get back from the IDP. So now we know we've tested and configured our SSO properly, in addition to setting up the SSO connections. Okay, now I can show you how the single sign-in works. So after I log in, instead of continuing with Google or with Apple, I'm gonna use the SSO. To make sure this is working correctly, I have to go to tenants in the console, go into the tenant, and then I can add the domain. So I can add it on this screen in the tenant settings. I'm gonna be logging in with zizio.com, or and also I have to go to authentication methods and then add the domain here that we're gonna be using for the single sign-in. And then I'll just put in my email address for the SSO, and then it's gonna go into the, the mocksaml.com website that we set up. And with this mock, we can only choose uh, example.com email address, but we'll just leave all this default. This is just mock and then click sign in. And then we are signed in We're using SSO. And just like that, we have a secure enterprise ready AI application. We protected the route. We added role based access control to lock down the agent configuration. And we enabled self service SSO for our big clients, all without maintaining a single auth server. Thanks for watching, and remember to use your code for good.